So we are two hours away from the official opening of Alfie Day's Pointless Book 2 signing. I am very excited to be able to interview Alfie personally for the YGA. The crowds are building and everyone's very excited. So I'm at the Alpac and I'm very excited to be um, interviewing. I don't really need to introduce him, but here's Alfie <laughs> Bates. Um, of course I'm you do. How you doing? Um, so I'm very excited to have Alfie Days, the best YouTuber, with Thank me. You. So let's get started. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Um, well, you've picked me up now. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Uh, I make little YouTube videos, as you may know. Um, yeah, that's about it. Follow my, follow my life around on, on YouTube and have a bit of fun, I suppose, and just put it online. Have For you... some reason, people watch it. I still, I still <laughs> don't know why, but yeah. Have you visited Lincoln before, and are you staying long enough to enjoy the sights? I haven't. I have never visited before. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's quite far away. I think it took me like four and a half hours yesterday on the train. Do you live here yourself? I do, yeah. Is it good? Yeah, I like it here. And then I'm leaving straight after this. Oh. I know, I, ne I never ever get time to look around anywhere. Um, I looked around the hotel lobby yesterday, trying to get some food late at night. <laughs> um, that was about it. Um, freedom of speech encourages people to have their own opinions without being singled out. You have this power at your fingertips daily. How do you cope with the negative feedback and comments? Yeah, freedom of speech is cool. I think, I think it's really, really good. Like, of course, everybody gets to express exactly what they feel, and people definitely do that online. People are very happy to say what they feel online. Um, I think I'm very lucky that I don't get too much negativity. Um, like I really really don't maybe like one in every 500 comments or something but I suppose it still does stick with you the way in which Zoe described it to me the other day and I was like oh my god that's the best way I've ever heard of somebody describing it is if you had like if you painted your bedroom brand new like all fresh paint and then you were putting the furniture back in and somebody like accidentally hit like a chair on the wall and it chipped the wall you would forever look at the chip on that wall and be like, it's not perfect, that, that's there, and you would know that there was a mark on the wall. And I suppose it's the same, like you can have thousands and thousands of positive, lovely comments, but it's the one negative comment that always stays with you more than anything else. So, yeah, I think I deal with it quite well personally because I just don't take it in and I'm just like, I don't really care what they think of me. I'm just having fun making silly little videos. But I know a lot of people that do take and re with really, really big audiences, do take it really, really personally, and it does really, really affect them. Um, but it's just something that affects everybody differently. Um, but it, we do see it. People think, oh, just because you get a lot of comments, you won't see it. We do see it. Do you ever worry about speaking your mind? With millions of followers watching your videos, you can influence the way a lot of young people think and act. With a lot of young people wanting to do what you do, it's a big responsibility. How do you feel about that? It's scary, you know. Um, I try not to think about all these questions that you're saying on a daily basis because it scares me uh, to think that what I might say is like influences somebody. Um, I remember when I had about 10,000 Twitter followers, um, I tweeted once, I don't know why, saying I like girls with short hair. <laughs> And the next day, the amount of tweets that I got of girls who had cut their hair because of my tweet. And that was when I had like 10,000 followers. And from that day on, I was like, okay, I have to be careful with what I say. But um, at the same time, of course, just like, I don't know, your friend or yourself might tweet something that you want to tweet. I, there are things that I want to tweet and just because I've got more followers that, that shouldn't affect how I'm tweeting. Um, but in general, I try and inspire like a positive message like I would never tweet anything really really negative or that's going to bring other people down and stuff like that but um yeah my twitter account's just like anybody else's I tweet and I say kind of what I do what I want to say online but I do at the back of my head know that there are a lot of people that could be influenced by what I say um so I always try and stick to like a positive underlying message what was your first video about 
My first video, I stupidly deleted it. It was so embarrassing, as you can probably imagine. Uh, it was called What To Do On A Rainy Day. And the only thing I can I want to see if YouTube has still got it somewhere, because I want to try and get it back. The only thing I can remember from the video, two things, is that I had my family like holiday camera and I like, stacked it on top of a load of books as I was talking to it. And then the other thing, I remember that I was playing Monopoly against myself in the video. Don't know why I thought that would be a good idea. Um, but it was just tips on what to do on a rainy day and how to not be bored, I suppose. Who inspires you? I get asked this quite a lot, and it, I don't really know, I, I, there isn't really any singular person that inspires me, um, there's been lots of different people that inspire, like, different parts of my life, um, like, my dad works, like, a crazy amount, and he inspires me work-wise, that, to, like, keep on going, keep working loads and stuff, and then there are a lot of people, like, obviously, like, my friend Louis, you may know, fun for Louis, he does like some amazing travel videos and he like inspires me and wants to make me like get out there and see more of the world. Um, yeah, a lot of different people. Richard Branson's done some really, really cool stuff, some amazing stories about him. Um, I guess I'd look up to different people for different aspects of my life, but there isn't any singular person that I look at. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's a hard one. <laughs> Obviously, lots of people are excited about meeting you today at Festival 800. What are you most excited about? I think it's just just meeting everybody, you know? Everybody, whenever I meet people that watch my videos, they're always so positive and happy and, like, bring me up. I don't know. Um, when I do events, and I've done events like this one here today, I think it's only, like, four hours, but I've done, like, signings and meetups and stuff for, like, eight hours before and everyone's like, are you not getting tired of things? And I'm like, not really, because every individual person that I meet is so happy and wants to chat and so engaging that it just makes me so happy and like, yeah, I don't know. The support is always crazy and it's always a shock. Um, so I guess the thing I'm most excited about is just getting to meet everybody and getting to say like, thank you for watching my videos, but to them in person, not just saying it online. Well, thank you for letting me talk to you today. And of course. Sticker in a badge here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.